So hello everybody and welcome to the last session of this hackathon, the last presentation at least. Today we will present some of the featured NFCO pipelines, the pipelines that have been uh, mostly used or that have been recently incorporated into NFCore. First, uh, Maxim Garcia will introduce us to SAREC, a workflow for detecting general and thematic mutations in whole genome sequencing and whole exome sequencing. Then um, Alex Pelza will follow with an introduction to uh, the rna -seq pipeline and Harshil Patel will introduce us to the viral recon pipeline, the newly added pipeline that has been a contribution of uh, him and NFCore to um, sequencing for, um, the SARS-CoV-2 new virus. So we are excited about this and also about uh, Björn Gruning's talk afterwards about biocontainers and bioconda. So um, welcome, Maxim, and um, we look forward to Sarek's introduction. Thank you. So, yes, I'm going to talk about uh, Sarek. I would like to thank uh, Gisela and uh, everyone over there for giving me the opportunity to present uh, Sarek here. So I work uh, at the Swedish Childhood Tumor Biobank in, uh, in Sweden, in Stockholm. I do also sit all the time uh, within SciLife Lab, which is a national center for molecular bioscience in Sweden. And I'm working uh, closely with uh, national genomics infrastructure. And uh, we are also uh, working, uh, collaborating quite closely with uh, NBIS, which is another infrastructure, but very uh, specific for bioinformatics. And I think for me as a bioinformatician, and I think for this whole community, reproducibility is very central. And that was very, uh, what was in our mind when we decided to start SAREC. So what is SAREC? SAREC, it's a park, a national park in Northern Sweden, which has, which is very, uh, a very like complicated landscape. And uh, we figured that such a landscape was a good analogy for the genomic landscape that we wanted to explore. So that's why uh, our pipeline has the name SAREC. And SAREC, oh yes, and every release of SAREC is based on a place within the national park. So that's why we have this uh, very fancy release name and not the usual uh, release name that you can find in the other pipelines. So SAREC, uh, it's an open source uh, Nextflow pipeline that we started at NGI in collaboration with NBIS and with support for Brand Tumor Banken. Uh, since we are uh, in NFCore, we've got uh, plenty of other developers that are helping us. Um, I think I can talk about like plenty of developers from Cubic and from other institutes as well. I'll mention that in my uh, in my next in uh, in my next presentation, but yes, this is an old one, so sorry about that. Uh, so it's written in Nextflow. I don't think there's any need for any introduction on that slide. So let's go to the other one. So Sarek has multiple flavors. Uh, you can analyze normal sample with just uh, the germline part of Sarek, or you can analyze uh, a tumor in a normal pair with Sarek somatic and Sarek works for wall genome sequencing, wall exome sequencing, or also targeted sequencing. So within SAREC, it's fairly simple. It doesn't seem simple when you look at the code, but basically what we do within SAREC is that for the pre-processing, we follow the JTK best practice. So I think the latest release is following uh, the JTK 4.1.7, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it means that we read the map to the reference genome with BWA. We then uh, mark the duplicate with picker mark duplicate, and we do the recalibration with the GATK based recalibrator. After that, we do some variant calling. So for the germline part, we use uh, aplotype color uh, uh, from the GATK. We use Trelka2 uh, from Illumina. We use Freebase and MPILOP to uh, resolve uh, small indels and uh, SNVs. And we use uh, Manta and TDIC to find out uh, structural variants. For the somatic variant calling, 
We use Mutech 2 uh, from the JTK, Strelka 2 from Illumina, Freebase as well. We discover the structural variant with Manta. Uh, we assess the sample heterogeneity, ploidy, and uh, copy number variation with ASCAT and Control Freak. And we do uh, have information about the microsatellite instability with MSI sensor. Then, from the variant calling, we do some annotation using using uh, VIP and SNP effect, so which gives us access to plenty of different databases. And then, of course, we are uh, gathering all the different reports from all the different tools into a multi-QC, a final multi-QC report. So this is our, our workflow in a more uh, explainable figure. Uh, I guess you've seen this one lately. Uh, what we are working on also at the moment is trying to work on uh, prioritization. So that will be one of the future developments that we're trying to work. Uh, the idea is to be able to rank, the, to rank, the, to rank all the variants and to help the clinician uh, figure out which variant could be relevant or not. So that should be coming, I guess, next year or something like that. It's quite complicated. So what is coming soon? We've been working a lot on this hackathon. So we fixed a couple of bugs. We added the BWA MEM2 in the dev branch as well. And we are working with Gisela and Frederike on uh, DSL2. So it is actually quite fun and I'm very, I'm very uh, looking forward to that. And I think that will be my big uh, project for the summer. Uh, what is coming next as well will be like more tools, uh, trying to have like more downstream pre-processing of the final VCF file, and maybe also a connection to Scoot, which is a visualization tool that uh, other teams are using here in Sweden. Uh, we did use Sarek a lot uh, in Sweden, so this is what I know of. So if other people are using Sarek, do tell me, I will, uh, that way I will know how many people are using Sarek. But in, uh, for us, within the biobank, we are using Sarek to analyze all our uh, tumor and normal sample. Uh, at NGI, we use that uh, to process all the normal samples and the tumor normal pairs. Uh, we, yes, and we also, it was also used to analyze uh, 10,000 uh, normal samples from the SwedGen data set. And we are uh, working with uh, GMS, Genome Medicine Sweden, uh, Sweden to uh, figure out some uh, tools to analyze uh, cancer sample as well. So that's, that's a development that I'm looking forward to. Uh, we do have an article that we published uh, earlier this year in F1000 Research. It has been approved by two peer reviews, so we were quite happy with that. Uh, if you want to get involved, you know the drill. We're on Slack, we're on GitHub. You already know all the address for that, so that should be fairly simple. Uh, yes, so I would like to thank uh, all the institutes I'm depending uh, from, uh, all the different institutes that are involved within NFCore, all the contributors that are uh, working on NFCore as well, and also all the contributors that are working uh, on Sarek. And yes, if you have any question, I'm here to answer. Thank you very much, Maxim. We got a really good idea about Sarek now, and I can definitely tell you that we use it at Cubic uh, a lot. We have used it for a lot of our summer is the only pipeline that we use for a whole exome and whole genome sequencing. So thanks for the developments. And and it was it's also really fun contributing to it. So uh, Phil Ewells is asking, can you talk about simple genomes? Can I use it on my E. coli? Uh, yes, so we started working on that. Uh... I think that was uh, last year, maybe a little bit more. So actually you can uh, use Sarek. Uh, the preprocessing will run following the JTK best practice and you actually just need a FASTA file. 
So as a reference genome, you just need a FASTA file. So you can potentially run Sarek on any genome uh, if you have a FASTA file. Uh, we are also, I have like, uh, we are getting quite a big and bigger community. So depending on what people ask uh, us to do, we are adding uh, multiple features like to skip the mark duplicate if you're working with amplicons, uh, to be able to, uh, to just do the mapping step and then and then do the variant calling from the from the BAMs that are just mapped. If you want if you want to work on a, on a genome on, a, on an, an organism that doesn't have that hasn't been uh, analyzed a lot yet. So if for example you don't have any non variant or stuff like that, and then you can do uh, another round of preprocessing with the with the, the variant that you discovered. So we are working on stuff like that. So if you have any uh, other features that you want to ask, don't hesitate to put up, uh, up some issues and stuff. Uh, what about is if we want to use another species that is not um, right now supported, but is part of iGenomes? Is it? Uh... Uh, I think we added all of the, uh, most of the species that were within iGenome because you basically just need the FASTA file. So I think I uh, added all the FASTA files that were on iGenome on Sarek, but I haven't tested everything because I don't have data for every organism. Perfect, that's, that's great. So what if I want to use Cention? What is Cention again? Okay, so Cention is a proprietary uh, solution that uh, they claim that they that they they can give you the same result as uh, GATK best practice and BWA, but with faster uh, response time, response uh, with a with a faster preprocessing. Uh, we do use that uh, for clinical setting at the biobank. So we I did uh, enable the usage of uh, Cention within Sarek. Uh, basically, we currently have like. Uh, two parallel uh, chain of processes that can run with Cention or without Cention. But to run Cention, you need to have uh, Cention installed on the machine that, you, that you're running Sarek on. Uh, for us on our own uh, server, it's installed with a module system and we use uh, NFCore config uh, repository to have a specific config for uh, Sarek for our uh, own uh, cluster that uh, load uh, the module for Cention. So it can be done if anyone else has access to Cention, I can help them do uh, a specific uh, config profile for that and that way anyone can use it as well. Perfect, so you just add it to the path and then you can just execute the path. Yes, that's, that's fairly simple. But I'm guessing that with the BWA MEM2, we will see some improvement as well. And I'm hoping that we, that the, the difference will be like uh, slightly shorter. So Phil is asking, how do you test the pipeline? Is it only miniature tests, data sets or something more? <laughs> Okay, so uh, currently what we are doing is that we are uh, uh, we are doing only uh, CI testing with uh, mini dataset. But I know that at NGI uh, we are doing some uh, some testing as well. But uh, that's not what I'm doing at the moment. I would love to be able to have uh, some validation tests. We are working on that. Uh, with, uh, with you actually, and with other people at NFCore to do some uh, real size uh, test uh, with real size data, data set on AWS. But yes, for the moment, we are still working on that. Uh, I think we are getting ready. We just need to figure out which data set to use actually, I think. Yeah, that's a good reminder from Phil that we should find finally a data, a big data set so we can run full size tests for. I think maybe we can try a genome in the bottle or stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. For a thousand genomes or, yeah. Mm. 